uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yes. Yeah, this is the five millionth time we've done this, this one. Absolutely. But, yeah. uh, we're back again, oh. annoying people with our views oh. and opinions. Because because a lot of people dislike to hear our views and opinions. Well, not only our views and opinions, but other people's people, views and opinions. Yeah. But if, you know, there if we somebody go. has the opinion that the Earth is flat, then that's their opinion. Absolutely, that's their opinion. And they've got every right to hold that, that opinion. opinion. Absolutely, and if people think that water is not H two O, then that's their opinion. You know, absolutely. There's lots of tribes out there. There's lots of people who live in tribes, who live in communities, who are religious, who think water is not H two O. Absolutely, there's lots of people. Yeah. 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 And if you want to have the opinion that whenever someone says sorry to you, they don't mean it, then you're well within your rights to hold that opinion. Absolutely. Because cool. you can probably be rest assured they're not sorry. <laughs> Absolutely, they're not sorry. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But anyway, come on, let's but go. Anyway, on. Now, let's get going. Um, now, what are we going to cover? We're, this video is going to be slightly different to our uh, usual format in the regard that we are asking you a simple question. And that is, could clouds be made of salt? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we don't usually ask questions, but we thought in this video we'll put out a proposal. A, we'll present people with a question because it's only an idea. Yeah, we're, we're going to present people with some information. Uh, so so can you yourself can uh, uh, formulate your own ideas or agree, disagree. Uh, whether you yeah. uh, think so clouds you can, could be made of salt. salt, so you can leave your comments below. You can like, yeah. subscribe, absolutely, thumbs up or thumbs down if true you're a YouTube it style. Yeah, you know, um, look, let us know what, what you, you think, think. after absolutely. the video. After you watch the video, let us know what you think. So, what we're well, if you do, decide to watch it, you might just switch off. But, uh, but let us know what you think. So, we're going to have a look at we're going to have a look at a bit of information about salt. We're going to have a look at Joseph Black. Because he thought there was more to salt than meat, met the eye. Absolutely. Have a look at the water cycle. The water cycle, or we could call it the salt cycle. We're going to have a look at clouds, information on clouds from Wikipedia. We're going to have a look at cloud seeding as well, that they actually use a salt yeah. to seed clouds. Yeah, very, very, very good for your lawns. We're going to fly through a hurricane. Yeah, so hold on tight. And we've got some, a lot of people have suggested that you can generate electricity in the sky in the atmosphere absolutely Is it of because course. of the salt um and that's about it and that's it but before we get going we've got to do not the song no. before we got you there but one thing we would like to do is just to show you this simple thing okay now a lot of people seem to think that in pop bottles like this there's co2 that's uh, in the inside the bottle that pressurizes the bottle is generated injected by, is injected into the liquid as it's okay. as it's put into the liquid during its production during its production during its manufacture okay now um we think it's our view that the co2 is generated purely from the ingredients, ingredients. it only in bottles such as this mass produced pop bottles and cans, cans. yeah okay Al acid alkali the ingredients are here if anyone wants to read ingredients they're all listed on here potassium sorbate citric acid there's your acid alkali you've got carbonates in there carbonated water is all the same even though carbonated water has things like uh, uh, potassium potassium potass yeah. no potassium carbonate potassium carbonate and sodium right. bicarbonate as yeah. well sodium bicarbonate absolutely because they want to try and so they say they want to mimic the, the, natural, the natural quality quality of mineral water, water. it's absolutely ridiculous but know, anyway come it on. just should be just water sparkling water but anyway now so to test this okay we've got uh, there's probably about this much left in there okay now this bottle is pressurized i can feel that it's very tight so what i'm going to do okay now this bottle you can squeeze it in like this okay yeah all right hold on yeah 
Let's open the let's top. Open the allow top. that carbon let's dioxide. All look. Can you see all of the? Can you see the cold vapor coming off? Can you see all the cold vapor? No, I can't. You can't see it. But there you go. Oh, it's gone now. Anyway, but anyway. So there, there you go. It's all gone. So it's all gone. So the carbon dioxide it's exists as a liquid at five atmospheres. Five atmospheres. There's a small little bit of vapor coming out of there. But that could just be. So hold on. Let's, let's just. So so it's it's with the top on. It's pressurized a little bit. Now, watch this. If the carbon dioxide is injected into the drink, then really we shouldn't be able to repressurize this at all. Yeah, the pressure would remain the same. Whereas if the ingredients produce the, um, uh, the carbon dioxide, and w like we, th we think, the reaction, they're able to react to then produce uh, CO2, we could repressurize this because by shaking the bottle, yeah, we are invigorating uh, the reaction between the acid alkali. So here we go. Are you watching? And instantly, we can feel that that is much harder. Now that tells us that the CO2, okay, is being generated by the reaction between your acid alkali that are contained as ingredients within the pot bottle. Mm. Okay. Do it yourself yeah, at home. Absolutely, yeah. Do it yourself. Listen. Here we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. And what we should do, what we should do, look, see the vapor? Yeah. Well, what we should do, what, oh, what we should do, no, is leave it unopened. No, what we should do is leave do it open. No, 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 this is what we should do. Wait a minute, are you watching? We should do that without shaking it up and just open it back up again. And you don't hear anything. Oh, right. Yeah, well, what you should do is leave it unopened throughout the whole time we do the video. And then at the end of the video, oh, see if you can repressurise well, it. That's what we'll do as well. We'll leave it open throughout the whole, throughout the rest of this video. Right, we'll come, come on, let's go on. At the end of it. But anyway. Anyway, let's go on. Let's, let's we're just, digressing. So we're going to uh, provide some information why it's a possibility why it's a possibility that, that clouds, clouds could, could be, be made, made of salt. salt so let's have a look at joseph black so let's have a little look at joseph, joseph black. black and we may have to get some pages up uh, if we're not doesn't matter just doesn't quickly matter. get the pages so joseph up. black now everyone joseph know. black is famous for even though he didn't have any he wasn't he was never married who is famous for discovering carbon dioxide there we go Joseph Black, but a small piece of information about him is that he was very interested in the elements because I think he was a, a, a supporter of phlogiston. He was a supporter phlogiston of phlogiston. phlogiston but one thing he uh, scroll down here yeah. we go. Like most 18th century experimentalists, Black's conceptualization of chemistry was based on five principles of matter. So we have water, water, earth fire metal and, and salt salt so he recognized that salt was a, a very discrete substance in its Dis own right distinct distinct discrete vital substance that was set aside, set apart from um, all, the others. all the others absolutely now let's go on the wikipedia page okay on salt yeah, maybe discrete wasn't the right word. Yeah, discrete. Salt is a mineral compro composed primarily of sodium chloride, chloride. which uh, is mm, debatable, but a chemical compound belonging to the larger class of salts. Salt in its natural form as a crystalline mineral is known as rock salt or halite. Um, salt is present in vast quantities in sea, sea water, water. Vast quantities. Vast. Where it is the main mineral constituent. Uh, the ocean has about 35 grams, blah, blah, blah. Salt is essential for life in general. There we go. And I actually wondered whether, um, because we've demonstrated that we breathe out a salt that turns lime water milky, and I actually wondered that one reason why we feel thirsty is because of the salt within our mouth, within our bodies. It's the salt content. Well, we lose water. We, we, out the salt releases water. That's why we feel parched, dry, because of the salt. Yeah. So it's an interesting idea. Um, but uh, so salt is essential for life in general, and saltiness is one of the basic human tastes. 
Salt is one of the most one of one of the oldest and most ubiquitous food seasonings, and salting is an important method of food Good preservation. preservation. They preserve go. a lot of meat with salt. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. So, salt, and if you go throughout the whole page, they basically emphasise the importance of salt throughout the history of civilizations the greeks the ancient romans the byzantines the hittites and the egyptians indians and salt isn't just sodium chloride salt can be other things can be other things salts can be carbonates well potassium potassium Pot potassium is a salt absolutely potassium lithium is a salt absolutely lithium is a salt um, you can have sulfates magnesium is a salt absolutely of course even sulfur can produce a salt Absolutely. You can have salt of sulphur, which mm. would be a sulphate, mm. etc. with other uh, substances. Um, so we don't need to go so it's down quite, So it's quite here, important, do we? That it's quite important to, to recognise that salt is, a, is, is vital for our lives, in our lives. Absolutely, of course. Oh, look, and there's a, lot of salt in, uh, in, there's a lot of salt around us in the sea. Yeah, I was just going to have a, just a quick look at this. I mean, if you look at this here. These are ponds near Maris, Peru, fed from a mineral spring and used for salt production since the time of the Incas. There we go. Now, if you look at all of that stuff, mm. it's very white. Well, look at the salt flats in uh, uh, salt Bolivia. Salt flats in Bolivia are very white. White. Very white indeed. Just like the clouds. So, there was a. Were, did we not. Were we not on the bottom of this having a little look at No, something? I don't think we no? need to. Sure? We don't no, need we don't. To. So, we don't need to. We don't need to look at that. Look at that. So, so, the next one. So let's have a look at the water cycle. So salt, all we know so far is that it's important. Mm. And it's, a, it's plenty. Abundant. Abundant. Mm. Now, here's the water cycle. And the, the ocean contains a lot of salt. Mm. So the water cycle, you have uh, the sun heats up the, the ocean. The water evaporates, carries along with it salt. Mm. Okay. And the it gets to an altitude where the um, salt basically in our understanding could possibly turn into clouds. clouds absolutely see here in this diagram they're actually saying that it's the water focusing more on the water the water evaporates condensates forms clouds forms and then clouds. You, it moves along and it forms well, because it's yeah. got precipitation because in their understanding they would say that the water condensates to form ice crystals ice crystals yeah. or water droplets mm. essentially because if let's go on um, cloud on wikipedia mm. let's have a look at some information uh, in meteorology a cloud is an aerosol consisting of a visible mass of minute liquid droplets frozen crystals or other particles suspended in the atmosphere of a planetary body or similar space blah 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 that's that bit's rubbish uh, water or various other chemicals may compose the droplets and crystals mm. so essentially what they're saying is clouds are essentially comprised of liquid droplets or frozen crystals mainly of water mm. okay but our, under, our uh, what we um, would say is what's keeping the water there? What holds the water there? Because one of the things that I've thought about is that when you have a, a, a dark cloud like loom over and it's going to rain, then it starts raining. So if these clouds are made of water and all the water's falling to the ground, then mm. that cloud really should be thinning out. It, it should be thinning out as, as, it, as the rain continues, you know. But uh, um, we don't see that. Uh, you know, we we can see a, a rain, a rain, large rain cloud on the horizon, and it's moving across, and you can see the cloud coming down in the rain, as it were. Mm. You know, mm. but the cloud doesn't thin out. You know, as it moves across, it just yeah. remains so thick above. So you know, something else is happening. So the well, it, something else could possibly be involved be involved yeah. be involved in this and it's likely that well, it's possible that it's the salt it's possible in the air that's in the air that's releasing water yeah because one thing we did and the salt remains up there hmm. one thing we did uh, some time ago is that we had a a tub of sacks of salt didn't we we had a tub of sacks of salt a large one and we put it in a damp place and after a few months it the salt had basically absorbed a lot of moisture yeah. a lot of the moisture in the damp uh, place had just 
been attracted to the salt. The, the cardboard uh, carton was absolutely saturated with water. It was nasty, wasn't it? Mm. And all we did was put it in a drier place and over a period of a few months, it dried out. Mm. Back to normal, oh, yeah. as if nothing had ever happened to it. It's my magic. Where's the Absolutely. water gone? It's wonderful. It really does make you think about the abilities of salt when it's in solution, or salt and water. Because mm, one, one, really. one of the properties of salt is that it's high growth, hydro, high hygroscopic. Hygroscopic. Would, would we be able to it would probably be on look there. at this? Let's have a Find look. Find on this page. Find on this page. Hygroscopic. High Grow. High grow. There it is. There we there go. go. The calcium and magnesium salts. Unrefined sea salt contains small amounts of magnesium and calcium hal halides and sulfates, which we were saying, you know, not mm. just sodium chloride. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The calcium and magnesium salts confer a faintly bitter overtone and they make unrefined sea salt hygroscopic. That is, it gradually absorbs moisture from the air if stored uncovered. Mm. Now, and hygroscopic means to, to absorb, absorb moisture. Moisture, yeah. If we go on to uh, our wiki page, or our, I'll go on the net. So hygro, it's possible that the salt migrates from the oceans up into the sky there we go. of a substance tending to absorb moisture from the air. Yeah. yeah. So that it's possible that the salt migrates from the sea up into the sky up into the sky and all around us is water vapor all around us is water vapor and it's possible that the salt that's up in the precipitates out oh, of no, solution no. Kind of thing. yeah yeah because you've got to be able to see when you see the clouds you can see the salt you can see the salt absolutely that's why it's white but it absorbs the water vapor that's in the air yeah um. and then it can absorb so much and then it reaches a point where it can't absorb any as much anymore, and then it falls, or uh, or or it the can, rain falls. Yeah, the I mean, the, the, the salt, falls. the salt because it's absorbing moisture gets heavier, heavier. So it falls down in it lowers in elevation, sure. and it gets to a point where it releases the moisture. Oh, sure. Yeah, but the salt remains up there. I mean, I was yeah. just thinking when I was looking at a, a picture there. And um, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if you can um, apply the conservation of mass and the conservation of energy to clouds. Mm. And that is, um, clouds will always, cannot be created nor destroyed. They can only, Change. in other words, you can, you can the, um, the amount of clouds that are up there now in the atmosphere will always remain the same. Possibly, possibly. Possibly. I mean, you know. But one thing with this is that you've got the water cycle. But in some ways, you could also call it the salt cycle. The salt cycle. Because the salt migrates from the ocean yeah, yeah. up into the sky. And that's where it absorbs the, the water vapour to then Release deposit, it. deposit, the, deposit absolutely, further yeah. down the line. Further down the line. I mean, when you think about it, it does make sense. And we've got an example of migration. Of we've salt. got an example more of examples. Migra more examples of salt, salt, salt migration. migration. Uh, when we've been doing our, we could do the magnesium. Let's do the magnesium sulfate, shall we? Yeah, this one here. Um, Just play. Look, here we go. A lot of people have been told that you we we exhale CO two, and one one of the demonstrations uh, people use or employ to uh, show people that idea is to get people to blow through lime water uh, CO two blown through lime water um, will um, so cause the calcium car calcium hydroxide to uh, become calcium carbonate and a white precipitate of, ca of calcium carbonate will form. Calcium carbonate is a salt. A carbonate is a salt. Mm. Now it's our understanding that that is, uh, you know, that well, that's it's a salt. not the case. It's and salt that it we is a out. salt that we exhale that turns lime water milky, milky, just like in this demonstration. Just like in this demonstration here, we're starting to see the lime water going milky. milky. Now we've done already, uh, we've- um, Electrolyzed we've sodium hydroxide. Electrolyzed sodium hydroxide. To produce, hydrogen, hold on, to produce hydrogen gas, gas, which contains a small amount of salt, and that was able to turn lime water milky. 
Absolutely, of course. Yeah, we managed to uh, mix lime water with the vapor that came yeah. off from the uh, cathode. We've also used. And lime water we've also milky. used. Well, we've also demonstrated that di ammonium hydrogen, hydrogen phosphate, phosphate can some can be put placed into a test tube of water, and some can be placed into a test tube of lime water. Or lime water, and the lime water will, will go, go milky, milky, whereas the one in the water so won't. Dubs. But they won't. So obviously, so it's, it's a salt that's it's clearly a salt that turns lime water. Milk. And and this one here is we're using magnesium um, sulfate, sulfate, Epsom salts, salts. Um, to do exactly the same to see if we can get the salt to turn lime water milky. Well, to my great and to well to not to only my great. to not only turn lime water milky, but to my great from one test tube into, into the, the other other test tube that contains calcium hydroxide yeah because, so because our understanding of lime water is that it's really a detector for salt it's a salt detector, detector. absolutely if you have lime water and it turns milky you know you've got the presence of a salt so we're putting in the uh, epsom salts it's been we've salvaged the epsom salts from electrolysis so it's been leached hmm. unfortunately best word so um, we're, we're putting it in poking it in there we go we've added some water, water. into the test wait there let's yeah we've added water already there we go added water into the into the test yeah. tube See, shaking it up that's not milky is it it's not it's, it's not, not milky. really milky but um and you can see the test tube on the in the rack on the right has got a small amount of lime water in. Mm. So there we go, fixing that up. There's our test tube of lime water on the back with the tube down. And you so hold the tube just slightly above the the, the, the level, surface. The surface oh. of the so calcium. So we've applied the heat. Applied the heat and the magnesium sulfate is dissolving. There you go, the magnesium sulfate is dissolving. And it is amazing. Bubbling it, away. You can, it dissolves and it's going clear. You can't so, see it. Absolutely. So you've just got to remember magnesium sulfate, Epsom salts in water. Okay, we're heating it up. And what's happening, there's a tube, top of this uh, test tube that um, runs across and goes down into a, another mm. test tube that's at the back there. And, with, and that has a small amount of calcium hydroxide lime water in it and what we were hoping to see is that lime water to go milky mm, mm. because then we know the salt from the epsom salts the magnesium sulfur has migrated through the tube and down into the test tube into the calcium hydroxide oh, Absolutely. so um, it's nearly 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 um, dissolved the magnesium sulfate okay, there, there we, we go. go let's move it on there you go i think it's gone looks gone yeah, um, bit more, bit more, and yep. you can see that looks pretty, pretty much. Bit more, nearly there, go, nearly there. there. there, there. So we've just finished, there and you can see clearly that there it. is a small, there's a slight cloudiness it's on the surface, on the surface, just below the surface of the calcium. Mm. But you do so. actually shake it. I do actually shake it. Just shake to, the uh, bottle. Oh, I think I've already done it there. Haven't I? No, there it is. There. There it is. There's, there's the. Uh, there's the bottle. There's the bottle. Giving it a shake. Well, there's shake, the test tube, shake not the bottle. Stirred. There you go. And uh, so we've managed to. Yeah, that was the. That was that was the original one where I blew through. through yeah, we've there got you go. sediment. There. But you can clearly see we've managed to turn lime water, water milky, milky, and we've demonstrated a salt migrating Rates. from the test tube through the tube into another test tube. Okay. There we go. Now, um, now we also. So, given the water cycle, we yeah. can understand how the salt can migrate and be carried up by the evaporating water. And have a salt water. cycle. And have a salt cycle. Anyway, but you were going to say. No, I was going to say, we also had uh, micro, uh, uh, we had another one. did a similar one with sodium hydroxide and aluminium. Oh, this one here. Can we do, should we do this one? This, this one, one here. here. Um, sodium hydroxide, did exactly the same, sodium hydroxide and aluminium. Now Got one. to remember. The main thing to remember about this reaction, and that is, it gives off. You get um, it gives off hydrogen gas. That's the mainstream mainstream un understanding, understanding of this reaction is sodium hydroxide mixed with aluminium will produce sodium alumina, sodium alumina in the jar in the and jar. hydrogen and gas. hydrogen gas. That's it. 
Absolutely, they, they are your products. Go and check the equation if you don't uh, trust us. But we do need to but return to this because there are some points that you'd like to have mentioned. Absolutely, this. yeah, we've got some wonderful points to mention about this. In our next video. In our next video, yeah, we'll do that uh, in, in our next, next video, of course. There you, go. But you there you go, so I'm blowing through this lime water to check, to check, test that it is lime water and it is active. Yeah, there we go. Because uh, we have a unique way of using our making our lime water. water and, absolutely, I'm, I'm sure other people do it out that way as well. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we're adding water to the jar. Okay, water to the jar, and we've up, wait, I'm adding in some sodium the hydroxide, hydroxide. There we go. into the, to the water. And uh, there we go. Yeah, now sodium them. hydroxide and aluminium is exothermic. The reaction gets very hot. It gets very hot. So there's the sodium hydroxide. It's it's cloudy. It's milky. Sodium mm. hydroxide is a salt. Mm. Just a thing I'd like to mention that. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drop in the aluminium foil. There we go. Strips of aluminium foil, and straight away we get a reaction. Okay, and. Look at that, a lot of heat is uh, mm. given off and we're waiting for the vapour to uh, increase within the jar here. Mm. Um, so we wait for a while before placing the tube into the um, test, test tube of calcium hydroxide. Mm. So there we go, we're waiting to yeah. see if we can see any vapour coming there out. There we go, there's a bit there. You there's can a see little bit of vapour there coming, coming out. Okay, now the vapour is likely to be water, water, water vapor, vapor, yeah, along with hydrogen as well as salt. Mm. This is our understanding, absolutely. This is what's being carried in. The so, if you want to wave, move it, in, move it along. Vapor. So, let's move this along, okay? So, we keep adding, uh, there's a tube, so we keep adding, won't do that one. There we go, wait there. I think we get it to. So there we've we go. got the tube in the correct position. There we go. We're adding the uh, yeah, because before aluminium foil, we tried. We I mean we did put the the tube too into, low into into the did go in, but you can see vapor coming right out of the uh, test tube there. So it's fine, which is uh, pretty okay. There's the aluminium, more aluminium being dissolved really by the uh, yeah. sodium hydroxide. Yeah, there we go, there go. And, and we've got it there when we continue on plod on there we plod go on. plod on because there's only a, because it's a similar when we electrolyze sodium hydroxide and scrub the bottle through yeah, with yeah. a little bit of lime water and that is very vigorous there reaction. isn't a lot of salt that migrates over absolutely but uh, you can clearly see uh, yeah we keep going yeah. we keep going but you can clearly see that the calcium hydroxide is going milky mm. That is yeah, undeniable. We'll the the vapour is coming out of that test yeah. tube like, like wildfire. Hmm. There we go. So there. Look, I think there we we, we're ready to. Yeah, we've taken out the test tube, and we give it a shake up. There we go. Look at that. And milky. And well, obviously, if we'd, have, if we'd have continued this, obviously that would have gone a lot well, uh, milkier. Well, uh, well, uh, there. Yeah, there you okay. go. Oh, 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 there. There. Yeah, I'll just there. zoom in. Yeah. There, there you go. There you go. Um, we can clearly see the lime, calcium hydroxide lime water has turned milky okay. in the presence of hydrogen. In the presence of hydrogen, mm. you know, that can't be heard of. So we, it's got to be a salt. It it's can't be CO two that's turning lime yeah, water milky. milky, especially given this what is, we've just seen. Absolutely. This is why it's important that carbon dioxide. This is why it's important to note that, in our opinion, carbon dioxide is incorrectly termed. Absolutely, of course, because carbon hydrogen is doing it. If absolutely mainstream's understanding. So, so if we take this information and we go back to our water so cycle, which so is quite reasonable to suggest that a salt can migrate. A salt can migrate from the ocean. From the ocean, and we do think up into the up into the upper upper reaches of the, the atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah, and. and come out of solution as it were because there's lots of water vapor around yeah to become clouds yeah and uh, after our previous video about breathing out a salt i mean some people have left uh, comments 
more or less saying well you know if there's salt in the oceans and when well, the water evaporates then the salt must evaporate there's got to be salt in the air there's got to be salt in the air absolutely because we we know that a salt can exist in solution clear but mm. it can also precipitate out and form a, a white milk yeah, because you might find it in because some cloudiness of, some of these globies would say now okay so i just need to just open my fish and chips and then the, it would absorb the salt. I can just use the air, yeah. but because you know, this yeah. is their understanding. But the thing is, is that in in our understanding, the salt is quite high up in the in you know up there. Yeah. And when you live near the sea, you you sense the salt more because but you the salt's coming in it's from, got, it's from got the a, sea. It's got a greater concentration rather than gone straight up. And in the there's air. a greater concentration. Yeah. Um, so it's understandable. Um, to a large degree that when it rains we can understand that um, when it rains salt could be um, carried by the rain and mm. that's where we get our carbonates from salts that stains um, calcium limestone for example limestone. or even or that could <coughs> account for efflorescence this could account for efflorescence why we get why efflorescence C occurs occurs on rocks on the surfaces on the surfaces absolutely i mean you know are there are any thoughts you know absolutely but let's show you some more information to support our view yeah. or mm. our, our idea it's mm. our idea really um we've got um cloud let's go on cloud seeding here we go now cloud seeding okay is a type of weather modification that aims to change the amount or type of precipitation that falls from clouds by dispersing substances into the air that serve as cloud condensation or ice nuclei oh, ice nuclei which alter the micro physical processes within the cloud mm, sounds sounds scientific there you go it? now mm. let's go all the way down and find out what they <coughs> actually use for uh Cloud seeding. Oh, methodology. Here methodology. Yeah, you can do this, okay. can't you? Well, the most common chemicals used for cloud seeding include silver iodide. Silver iodide, which is a salt. Potassium iodide. Which is a salt. salt. Dry ice. Um, which carries a salt. Well, because they obtain it from carbon dioxide. Because they obtain it from carbon dioxide. Or they process the carbon dioxide. Absolutely. Uh, they use liquid propane, but we don't have to worry about that at the moment. Absolutely. This can produce ice crystals. Blah, 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 blah. After promising research, the use of hygroscopic, there's that word again, hygroscopic, hygroscopic materials such as table, table salt, salt is becoming more popular. More popular. Well, I wonder why, Peter. I wonder why table salt. So now, employed, see, the thing is, salt is becoming more popular in cloud seeding. Now, the thing is with, with man is that if he's trying to replicate nature yeah he try and carry out the same kind of try and replicate the process that nature does well, absolutely of course you know yes. so if he wants to make it rain you would have thought he'd put up more water in there or absolutely of course put up more hydrogen and oxygen <laughs> absolutely of course but putting up more salt would ensure that you've got more nuclei condensation nuclei to absorb attract attract that water it's vapor that, that water vapor, vapor that's in yeah absolutely because we did have a little look at um, if we go from here i know this is jumping a little bit but if we go onto this page which is national geographic and if we've got the page yeah, clouds, all clouds. Down clouds let's get rid of that rubbish um, clouds form when humid air cools enough for water vapor to condense into droplets or ice crystals there's no mention there about salt mm. uh, the altitude at which this happens depends on the humidity and the rate at which temperature drops with ele elevation mm. normally water vapor can only condense onto condensation nuclei tiny particles that serve as kernels around which drops can form mm. that's what condensation nuclei are so um, a uh, an example of condensation nuclei could be a speck of dust oh and the water is clings onto that oh, basically like or the ice crystal clings onto that speck of dust like how richard hammond from the top gear fame would say that it's a speck of dust that's been carried all the way from a australia dirt, a dirt devil in australia. australia absolutely but what could it not be also possible that salt Salts. can be a, a condensation well, it's, nuclear it's hygroscopic isn't it well it is hygroscopic yes of course so it makes so it does attract moisture, moisture 
Absolutely, of course. Um, absolutely, that's yeah, that's all to... I need to do because yeah. that's all we need to do about um, just that little bit there yeah. was enough. Because when I read that, I thought, well, salt could be in condensation yeah, nuclear, absolutely could it not, especially because yeah. it's hygroscopic. Absolutely, of course. So we don't need that anymore. We so, don't need that anymore either. Let's have a look. So a lot of people will think that okay, if there is no no, no there's water droplets there's ice crystals up there in the sky okay then. so let's go and let's go and fly through a hurricane oh right of course yeah oh no i haven't Come got on. The, let's go uh, and fly through a hurricane let me go and have a little go and have a little look at the page here we go flying through a hurricane uh, oh here we go yeah sorry about that. it should be on the history uh flying through, through hurricane hurricane yeah, yeah here, here we go, we go. Brace yourselves. There Which we go. One? That's this one. one. Now this is this is a good one. You'll like this one. Um, flying through a hurricane, hurricane eye wall. Now there we go. hurricanes are filled with cloud. clouds. There's so much cloud in a hurricane that it's unbelievable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of uh, aircraft, uh, military aircraft, fly through. A meteorological aircraft fly through these clouds to Come reach on, the forward. eye of hurricane. The tiger. The centre of the storm. <laughs> So yeah, we've got we the don't aircraft need to watch all this. there. Yeah, they got that there. There we go. Yeah, that's all the bit. Wait there, I'm just looking for the bit. They there get we themselves in. in. There we yeah. go. Getting into, holding on tight because of the there going. Look, the, the very way cloudy. Now into the hurricane. Very cloudy there. Very look. cloudy. Look, superb. And lot there's of ice an crystals. awful lot of rain associated water. with yeah, water, water moisture. Okay, and. What anyway. the main thing we've got to think about this? There's a lot of turbulence and a lot of clouds and a lot of uh, coldness. I yeah, suppose. Look at them in the cockpit. And look at these guys are in the cockpit and they're not using their windscreen, windscreen wipers. Yeah, absolutely, it must be nice and warm in that cockpit. Absolutely. Now Cold I can't. Outside. One of the things I can't work out, and that is when it's foggy, you, the water forms all over mm. your windscreen. Yeah, if you've got a visor on your motorcycle helmet, oh. or on your on your goggles or whatever you get condensation mm. everywhere liquid water so you'd be using your windscreen wipers but these guys okay these guys going through here are not using them at all now that's telling us okay that the um clouds. the clouds that's when it's hitting the windscreen of are the dry. aircraft are dry mm. uh -huh. which means in our opinion that there's no water there. There's no water there. Absolutely. <sighs> I can understand why people say that there's um, their ice crystals because of the temperature. But then, if they're ice crystals, you'd hear them. You'd hear them on the windscreen. You know, you'd hear them, but you never see them wa washing them off. You'd never see them wash off. They'd you know, collect all you know, over. Got, you know, you'd know about all they'd this have, stuff. Uh, like you have on your car to clean your windscreen. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, of course. Squirt yeah. some water to clean yeah. your windscreen. Aircraft don't have them. Absolutely. And just as a little intermission, I'm now going to, okay, I'm now going to cap over the half an hour. That's so, so if there was carbon dioxide gas in that, that would have left. That would have left. By that would have left by now. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll leave it for a while and then we'll shake it up to see if it repressurizes right at the very end. Right at the very end for everyone's displeasure. Absolutely. Of course, because we know what's going to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, you can clearly see that uh, that you know clouds, clouds are, are very dry. dry. Yeah. Clouds are very dry. It's and in our understanding, why it is is because the salt has absorbed all the moisture the, at that, that elevation. The, uh, well, there may not be as much uh, moisture at that elevation. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. Because one thing w w even we're aware of is that when you because this plane it's must be a little view, yeah. I don't know how high this plane is, but when you're up, say, Everest, yeah. when people climb Everest, the reason why they run out of breath is because there's less moisture the higher they go. The higher you go, there's less moisture. So it stands to reason why the clouds are whiter on the tops than on the bottom. Absolutely. You see whiter clouds at higher altitudes because there's less moisture. Because there's less moisture. Because the salt has absorbed a lot of the... No, because they, they don't contain much they salt. Don't, they don't contain much, much moisture. Moisture. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely, of course. What's this? Uh, oh, this is another. This is but um, so, I mean, it's interesting, interesting stuff. And another thing to support our view is some people have suggested, and I can understand why, that there's that there's electricity. You can generate electricity. Absolutely, yeah. Generate electricity uh, with salt. So, well, um, you can ge generate electricity from the atmosphere. Using, oh, hold on, generating wait, electricity. We need to go on to the so you think well how can you generate electricity from the atmosphere from the atmosphere which one would apparently you, like you can just uh, send up a little a wire up there and it will pick up it will generate electricity no, we'll just play we'll just play yeah. this this is atmospheric electricity powering a corona motor electrostatic, electrostatic motor, motor. Corona motor or electrostatic motor. There we go. So you know there are people out there who are doing things where they are harnessing the electrical um, energy energy um, that surrounds us, that's in the atmosphere. Yeah. But in ours, with this guy in this demonstration, yeah, <clears throat> not with this, with this, is that he would have been better off doing it on a cloudy day. Absolutely, no. Yeah, there's absolutely. more salt. Absolutely, because if you think about it, logically, if, if you live somewhere where it's cloudy, you're obviously going to generate more. Well, it would be interesting to see if there would be more electrical energy generated generated in the atmosphere where it's cloudy as opposed to when it's not cloudy. Mm, there That's we go. It. See, this is what it's all about. It's all Anyone's about getting out there into all this. Absolutely, you want to be doing all this. Absolutely, stuff. yeah. But you know, everyone's familiar with uh, harvesting the. Electrical energy. Electrical energy from the atmosphere, even though it may not be a lot. However, saying that, everyone is also familiar with lightning. Mm. Now, lightning is a weather phenomenon, okay? And when you have sheet lightning, um, it's more than reasonable to understand that cloud, because they are salt-based, they can, in our can, opinion, in our opinion, they can conduct the electricity. Mm. They can even generate the electricity as well. Absolutely, because yeah. that's something we haven't actually looked at. Uh, looked at, and well, but we're going to do do it now. Salt generating electricity. electricity. There we go. There we go. Uh, let's have there a little go. look at that one there. That one there. There we go. So the guy here, this is free energy from salt water, salt water power generator, free electricity. But you've still got to get your salt water yeah, absolutely. and the effort you've got to take into doing it. Your time. Your time and everything. So so he's using copper wire, um, one cathode, one anode, copper wire wow. maybe, and the steel bolt screw, whatever, for the other side. Mm. I think, whatever. And he's going to... So this is great. The only up. trouble is, is that he'll, he is, in a sense... So there you go, it's got four nails, sorry, and the uh, four wires. Even, wire. even though he's creating electricity, he's actually creating the electricity at the expense of those electrodes. Absolutely, at the expense of those the electrodes. Because they will decompose. So you could actually argue that all he's doing in this demonstration is that he's decomposing the energy that's been used to create those that nail the copper and the wire. copper wire. Absolutely, he's yeah. decomposing that or releasing that energy with the help of the water. That's and the salt is the catalyst. And the salt is the catalyst. catalyst. Yeah, absolutely. And because it's the water is breaking it all down. Absolutely, and the and the all of that energy is being turned into electrical energy, energy. which powers a small LED the light. Light, yeah, light, basically. You know. yeah. So he got anode cathode, anode cathode yeah. in each of these. Yeah. Because it would be very interesting. Four containers. It would be very interesting if he left this there running. Go. There's his little diode. Yeah. If he left this running, the water would go dirty. The water would probably go dirty. So you just yeah, have sure. to ask yourself where the dirt came from. When Where the impurities came, came from. from. So there you go. The LED is actually lighting up. So, you know, he's getting an electrical um, current. Yeah, he's drawing a charge, yeah. From, with the help of with the salt, salt so water. It's no wonder that you can actually get. Well, absolutely, yeah. It's likely you can get some electricity yeah, I mean, from up said, above. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So there, there is. He's got his uh, okay. uh, takes the copper wire out. So salt water conducts electricity. Salt is your electrolyte. Salt can generate electricity. It can generate electricity as well. Salt, I'm sure, used to be the form the basis of many batteries in the early days it still does it still does i'm sure lithium mm. which is a salt of course you know absolutely 
Of course. So, you know, the information's there, you know. But um, it certainly does get people thinking about everything, you know. Mm. And that's it. That's, that, it. that, that's, that's it. it. We've, we've done it. So, so let's do we, we've got to do this. Now, there we go. Well, let's so, get the thumbnail up because then we've, we've oh, all then done Oh, then everyone knows that we've done. I'm just yeah. looking. At, oh, oh, sorry. No, there is something we've got to give you before we go. And this is this little article here. China spent millions on a shady project to control the weather ahead of the Beijing Olympics. Uh, this article was 2016. Um, this summer, China set aside $30 million for a controversial project that involves shooting salt and mineral-filled bullets into the sky. Absolutely. You know, the information's here. Why are they using salt? salt. Mm. Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Because salt is hygroscopic and it will absorb and attract moisture in the attract air. Attract and absorb the water vapor that's in the air. That's in the air. Because there's lots of it. Absolutely. There's and lots of it. The more water vapor it will attract and absorb, the heavier it, the heavier it will become. And then it will drop down to a point where the, the water vapor, the water vapor will turn into liquid water and then will release from the salt. Yeah, it can, absolutely yeah that's our uh, that's our take on take this, you on know it, yeah. um you know anyway but so that that's our, our last piece of information um so so there you go you know um just get a thumbnail absolutely so some people have asked us in the past about clouds you know absolutely. what, what, what do you think other people what do you think of clouds and so in, our, in our, in our understanding, our, it's, our they're salt. Understanding, made of salt. What's it's quite salt? possible that they are made of salt. salt. What kind of salt they are? What kind of salt they are? Uh, I don't know. But so that, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. What about the pop box? Leave your comments down below. Oh, Let wow. us know what you think. Do you Absolutely. think clouds could be made, made of salt? salt. Mm. You know, it's a possibility. Well, it's only an idea we're throwing out. So that's it. Before we go, we've got to do this, haven't we? Oh, so, well, yeah. Let's screw the cap on nice and tight. There we go. Now, again, if carbon dioxide is generated between the reaction of the acid and alkali that are contained within the ingredients of the drink, this bottle should be pressurized. Nice. If the CO2 was injected in here, then you've only got a limited amount of CO2 mm. and it would have left. Would have you left. won't be able to yeah. be pressurized. Okay, you can try this at home as well. So mm. you can see me squeezing that in. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Yeah, that's you. You can feel that. Oh, right. You can feel yeah, that, yeah. that. You can feel that. That's uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, wait there. Ready? There you go. There we go. Yeah, the CO two for mass produced uh, pop bottles and cans. The CO two is in the ingredients. Mm. Or sorry, the CO two is generated by the Produced. reaction of the ingredients. Absolutely. Acid alkali reaction. Mm. And on that note, I'm going to pour myself. A nice glass of pop. Pop. Yeah. That's, That's still what you fizzy. And me should do. That's what you and me should do. We should actually um, absolutely there you go. Shake up a bottle and collect the gas and see if that would turn lime water milk. It, it, well, would. it would. It would. Yeah. It would. Of course, it would. Absolutely, because it's no different than doing your vinegar, vinegar uh, and yeah, sodium yeah, bicarbonate. Yeah. So there you have it. Thanks ever so much, and always remember till next time if something doesn't make Makes sense, sense. Like, like yes, like thinking that some specks of dust. The, oh, specks of dust that kind of ping pong up, right up into the high atmospheres from a dirt devil in Australia. That Absolutely, can yeah, then be carried along in the atmosphere, and then a water can be attracted to it. Absolutely, yeah, sure. The yeah, form clouds. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. I think, yeah. If something doesn't make sense, it's certainly nonsense. nonsense absolutely. And I have to admit, how true that is. Mm. Because if you can't understand something, there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with whatever somebody's telling you. That's, Absolutely. That's the thing. <laughs> which that's is, quite, which is, is very actually true. very true. Because, um, because uh, if somebody can't explain something to you in a very simple way, then they're to giving, they're more or less giving you nonsense. Absolutely, of course. So thank you ever so much, and we'll see you next time. time. Next time, yeah, because yeah, we've got some, some great, great stuff. stuff lined up. Oh, yeah. Um, so there you have it. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. The Earth isn't round. It's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat. Everywhere it's flat.